After doing my soldering primer video, I came to realize that I need to do another video as it relates to the projects that I do that you'll find on my website. And this is a video on Arduino microcontrollers. Well, first of all, what is an Arduino? Arduino is an Italian company. They basically came up with the idea of matching the Atmel series of microcontrollers to little hobbyist boards and also a software interface that you could program them. That software interface is called an, an integrated development environment. And when you talk Arduino, this is probably the most famous of all. This is called an Arduino Uno. This particular one is a real one and there are dozens and dozens of clones out there. And the real one will cost you around $20 and I've seen these clones go for as low as $5. They all have the same footprint. They have a voltage regulator on board. You can power it by USB and it gets you started. So what's a microcontroller? Well, a microcontroller is basically a computer, so it has the power of manipulating data. However, they're quite lacking on the interfaces such as a video screen or a keyboard or mouse or anything like that. These are a little more simplistic. They have a lot of input-output ports on them. Some of those ports are digital ports, some are analog ports, and they're very useful for automating certain tasks. And if you go through all the rvproject.com projects, you'll find that probably 90% of my projects use a microcontroller. So that's why I'm making this video, because if you're going to learn to solder and you're not going to learn anything about microcontrollers, then you're not going to really be able to do many of my projects. I'm using the Atmel brand of microcontrollers and these are all the different controllers that I have used in my projects. The first one is called an AT8085 and it's quite small. In fact this has about 50% of the power of the original guidance computer for the Apollo mission so something twice the size of this took us to the moon and back. And next up is the Arduino Uno and this has an Atmel 328. Now you don't have to remember all these. However, this is kind of a bulky board and this is really kind of hard to put into a project. And a lot of times I don't need the power of this board. And I've used this in my silent eye and my battery monitor and several other projects because that's all the power you need for those projects. However, on occasion I do need the power of this. For example, for my water monitor, I'm using the AT8085 for the individual sensors. But for the control panel, I'm using one of these microcontrollers. However, you can buy the thing in an equivalent, which is called an Arduino Nano, and this basically is the same as this. So this I can fit into a project easily where this is just too hard to. Although the nice thing about this is this is a good start if you want to learn Arduino and microcontrollers because it's larger and it's easier to handle. And you can buy kits, which I'll put on my website uh, if you want to learn this as well. And then finally, we have a Mega 2560. And again, this is the prototype, and this is the equivalent version. And I'm actually using this in one project. So I did have one project where I needed all the extra power of this particular microcontroller. An Arduino board such as this Uno is more than just a microcontroller. It includes a 5-volt regulator, a 3.3-volt regulator, a 16 megahertz crystal oscillator, a USB port so we can connect to a computer so that we can download a sketch, status LEDs, and other support circuitry. All of which of course is supported by the Arduino IDE so that we can program the microcontroller. And in the case of the AT8085, all you get here is the microcontroller. No support circuitry, no USB interface, no anything. But sometimes that's enough. The advantage is that it's a very small package and that's why we use it so much. When we compare the microcontrollers, we see that the 2560 used in the Mega has 256K of memory, 8K of RAM, 54 general purpose I.O. ports, and 16 MIPS, 16 million instructions per second. 
in the Uno and Nano, we use the AT Mega 328 with less memory, 32K, 2K RAM, again 16 MIPS, and 23 general purpose I.O. ports. And the lowly AT Tiny 85, there's no official Arduino board for it. 8K memory, 512 bytes of RAM, MIPS is not specified in the spec sheet, and six general purpose I.O. ports. So there you have basically the microcontrollers that I'm using. If you were to build one of my projects, you'd build my project with one of these microcontrollers. Then you have to program the microcontroller by downloading firmware to get it to do something because when it comes out of the box, these things, of course, like any computer, won't do anything. You don't really need to be a programmer, but you do need to know a few things. So we'll continue on with that. On all of my project web pages, you'll find a page that includes this link setting up the IDE. And also you'll find a graphic like this, which is actually the software that makes whatever I built work. So when we set up the IDE, we only have to really do that once. And then from then on, you just would download the software for whatever project you're doing, load it into the microcontroller and you're done. So let's look at setting up the IDE. This web page has gone through a couple changes and I used to recommend this uh, programmer, but I've had issues with it and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. If you bought one of these and it works for you, then continue to use it. However, since then I've preferred to program the AT Tiny 85 with the Arduino Uno. And in my web page, I do have another video on how to do that. But this is just kind of an overview. On the middle of the page, you will see a link to the Arduino Uno Programmer Hookup Guide. When you click on that, you actually go to the Arduino website. Here's an Arduino Uno. It shows you how to connect to the AT1085. It gives you everything that you need. And all the background information that you need. And how to install the software and then how to do the programming. So instead of me trying to tell you how to do it, the best thing for you to do is to go here and follow these instructions because they're done quite well. And then finally it shows you how to do a test and even has a video. So quite a lot of information here and far be it for me to replicate the information. Now I'm going to show you some basics of the Arduino IDE. Now it depends on if you have a Mac or a Linux machine or a Windows machine, the interface is going to look slightly differently. So if it doesn't look the same on your Windows machine, just realize that's the issue. Programs in Arduino are called sketches. Now the first thing you have to do is to set up the Arduino IDE for the microcontroller that you're going to use. And since you can't see this with a Mac, I'll have to just walk you through it. You'd go to Tools, and then you go to the board. And here we have the different boards that we can use with the Arduino IDE. Here is the Arduino Uno, the Arduino Nano, the Mega 2560, and down here is the AT Tiny. All these up here come with the Arduino IDE. The AT Tiny is a add-on. It's called a core. And a core is just a set of definitions. And you download that from the internet and then you would add that to the IDE. And again, the tutorial that I showed you from Arduino itself will show you how to do that. So you definitely need this core. The next thing that you're going to need, and most of my projects include that, is a library. And here are some of the libraries that are on this IDE. Now what a library is, you can kind of think of it as a driver. It basically has additional commands for the hardware that you're using. Now some of these libraries again are built in. Uh, you can see a mouse, so if you wanted to control a mouse you'd use that library. Liquid Crystal would be for a LCD display and so on. 
And to use one of these libraries, you have to add it to your project. And you do that by just clicking on that, and you can see it added a bunch of stuff up here. Now, when you get the software from me, it'll already have all this in, so you don't have to do this. I'm just giving you some background information. And the reason we use libraries is because we have a limited amount of resources with each one of the Arduino chips. And if we had all the libraries installed, the code would be just too large and nothing would run. Just like the core, we may have to download a new library. And we have to do that in probably 50% of my Arduino projects. For example, the Silent Eye has a library from Adafruit, and Adafruit is one that supplies the uh, LEDs. And each project that I have, it will tell you where to get the library. And again, if you go to the Arduino website, and I'll provide that link, it shows you how to install additional libraries. Uh, gives you a definition again of the library and how to install it. Very detailed information. And again, you know, I'm not going to reinvent the wheel when you can get really good quality information here like this. So again, like in the soldering project, you learn by doing. And I would recommend maybe an Arduino kit. On the website, I'll show you a couple that I would recommend. And for example, here's the kit. 28 bucks includes an Arduino Uno clone, some hookup wire, and dozens and dozens of parts with a breadboard. And this will allow you to program the AT8085 by using the Arduino itself. So that's one reason why to buy one of these. Comes with a CD with a tutorial. You know, you've got dozens of different projects here. You might find it is kind of interesting. 28 bucks isn't a whole lot, and you don't have to solder any of this stuff. And if you can't get the software to run on your project, you may be missing a core, you may be missing a library, so just go back and check everything. Look at the instructions again. So let's go through a quick summary. You will be using the Arduino IDE to program the microcontrollers including three that are supported by Arduino plus the AT8085, which is not directly supported. You should understand what a sketch is, as well as a core and a library, and when you may need them. And since the Atmel AT8085 is not directly supported by the Arduino IDE, we need to add a core so that it can be recognized by the IDE. Some sketches in rvproject.com projects also require an additional library to support the hardware that the microcontroller is interfacing. And finally, the sketch must be downloaded to the microcontroller. All of the Arduino microcontrollers have USB ports, so that's not a problem. The AT8085, however, has no USB interface. So the best way to download the sketch to that is actually by using an Arduino Uno as an interface between the AT8085 and where your sketch is stored on your computer.